Welcome to episode 993, Henry Kravitz, The Leverage by Al King, 10 Lessons. This is an outline of episode 993, lesson 1 to 5. This is lesson 6 to 10. Lesson 1, he invented a whole new industry, leverage buyout. Henry was ahead of everybody when it came to raising money. He sort of invented the business. Poured in. So did invitations to glamorous New York events. Kravis's second marriage to aspiring fashion designer Caroline Rome catapulted them onto the society pages. The couple often attended black tie events with their good friend, Donald Trump. Henry was a very glamorous figure in those early days. He was a very, very basic guy with a brilliant mind, but he always seemed to be surrounded in glamorous settings. Lesson two, his company, KKR, invited competition. KKR was the most feared and revered leveraged by our firm in Wall Street in the 1980s and 1990s. He invited and inspires plenty of competition, most notably Blackstone. Stephen Swassman is now king of private equity, and he is three times richer than Henry Kravis. Please watch episode 109 and 110 of this channel. Lesson 3, the two cousins. George Roberts and Henry Kravitz are cousins since age 2. They both worked for Bear Stearns before they co-founded KKR. Lesson 4, the deal of the century. Al J. Al Nabisco. In 1989, KKR acquired Al J. Al Nabisco for $25 billion for one of the largest leverage buyout in U.S. history. Nabisco is famous for Oreo cookies and the Salem and Winston cigarettes. Lesson 5, the mentor, Jerry Kohlberg. Jerry Kohlberg was 19 years older than Henry Kravis when they co-founded KKR. $45 million in fees. Suddenly, with rich fees and rewards, came a split within KKR. Kravis and his mentor, Jerry Kohlberg, were in a battle for the soul of their company. On May 18, 1987, Jerry Kohlberg announced he was leaving KKR. In the press, he hinted at a decline of ethics at his former company, telling the New York Times he would stick with deals where reason still prevails. Jerry's departure was very painful for all three. Lesson 6. Talk to people rather than run computer models. There's so many things that you can do to improve a business, to make it better, uh, to merge it with somebody else, to go to China, which you hadn't thought, on do thought about doing, and so forth. They're in a box, and this is how they do it. They sit in front of the computer, and I try to tell them, get away from the computer, garbage in, garbage out. Go out and meet people, talk to them, and you don't have to have every single uh, answer. Lesson 7. A true entrepreneur has no safety net. A real entrepreneur is somebody that has no safety net underneath them. But really, truly has an idea and has a vision and sticks to their convictions. You've got to have the courage of your convictions. And a lot of people are going to tell you you're wrong. If you did everything by consensus, you wouldn't do anything at all. That's an A. You don't know how good you are until you face failure. The ability to face failure. As I say, there's nothing wrong with failing. Pick yourself up and try it again. You're never going to know how good you really are until you go out and you face failure. That's a nine, a culture of equal participation. One last point I will make. What has stayed the same at KKR is our culture. Our, but uh, to us, what was very important uh, right at the beginning, we came from a firm which was an eat what you kill uh, firm, Bear Stearns, uh, and we decided that when we started KKR, every single person at KKR was going to participate in everything we did, whether you're a partner at the firm or you weren't a partner, whether you worked on a deal or you weren't, wor didn't work on the deal, whether you lived in San Francisco where one of our offices where George was, or in New York where Jerry and I were, uh, everyone was going to participate uh, there. Today, 41 years later, and 
21 offices around the world, lots of different businesses. We're exactly the same. And this is critical, I think, to, uh, uh, to what KKR is, is all about. Lesson 10, any fool can buy a company. Difficult part is how to create value after you bought it. Our job really begins the day we buy a company. We like to say to people, don't congratulate us when we buy a company. Any fool can buy a company, you just pay enough. That's the easy part, to make an investment. That's the easy part. The hard part is, what do you do with the business once you have uh, made your investment? How do you create value? What do you do to make that company much more efficient? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.